Hey there. Now brace yourselves. I'm going to ask you a very personal question. So you might wanna sit down. Are you a fan of something? I'm ashamed to admit it, but I like Puyo Puyo. <laughs> Don't laugh. Something you may not know about people who are fans of things is that we like the things we are fans of. We tend to get attached to the characters, the world, the music. Perhaps you're even so deep in that you admire the craft that went into making the thing you're a fan of. For better or worse you're a fan. But sometimes that thing you're a fan of implies an element that may not even be intentional by the people that made the thing and you think something wholly unintended for the characters you're a fan of that not many others do. Sometimes the thing you're a fan of disappoints you and you try to think of a way you could like it again. These scenarios is what one could call a headcanon. A headcanon is something you project onto an element of the thing you like, that the thing just doesn't support. For example, Marol in the hit video game Puyo Puyo Tetris 2 had this corrupted form. In canon Dark Mall is a pretty heinous state of being formal, has a hard time telling right and wrong when it comes to fun. This form is not a good thing. And it's done away with halfway through the game. Never to be seen again in the story. That's canon. Now a headcanon would be if after the game, the Dark Mole form stuck around as a split personality or entity, and has become a less horrible of a form for the true Mile to be. All because I hypothetically like Dark Mile's personality and design. Because this is a cool design, this one's just better, they can have a basis in the story or they can not. There's nothing wrong with having a headcanon. They can be a lot of fun. But it is something you should be aware of that is something you may ver made up and such. If you had canon that Al has a curry restaurant in Primp Town, being the one who invented curry as far as Primp Town is concerned and that's how she makes money. Then only spread it as a head canon you have, don't spread it as a truth. I'm saying all of this because I think none of the head canons I'm presenting are true. They may be on the ball as far as I know. Some are plausible because they can't be contradicted. Some of these are complete farces that make me laugh. But I'm not selling any of these as truths. Also please don't take any headcanon I have personally if it contradicts with yours. The shoe could easily be on the other foot. These are all fun thoughts we have at the end of the day. Also I'm not putting that much thought into these. I may even ignore things that contradict me. This video is just for fun. Got that? But. Here are some Puyo Puyo headcanons in no particular order. Schizo's favorite food is carbonara. In Puyo Puyo 7 you find Shizo suffering from hunger in Egypt. If you pick Amity to fight against Shizo, then Shizo smells that Amity and Ringo are carrying carbonara with them. Putting aside it's really random for Ringo and Amity to carry spaghetti with them, that doesn't change the fact that's a hyper specific thing for Shizo to smell. So Carbonara is just Shizo's favorite food to me. Other fandoms assign favorite foods to other characters for less. Honestly, if Amity and Ringo weren't carrying Carbonara on them that just strengthened my point Shizo loves the stuff. Why call out Carbonara of all things? Is that even a well known spaghetti? I didn't know it was a spaghetti, I thought it was a type of sausage but fancier. Six more princes we never see. So Satan in the western localizations is hilariously only ever called Dark Prince. Everyone knows this. It also doesn't take a genius to figure out what his actual name is even if nobody ever referred to him as Satan. Come the fifth mainline game. Puyo Puyo Fever they introduce the Ocean Prince, or Prince of Ocean at first. Dark Prince. Ocean Prince. Dark Prince. Ocean Prince. Because of the western localization naming Satan Dark Prince these two sound like generic boss names and a platformer if you know what I mean. Dark Prince sounds like he should be the lava world boss and Ocean Prince the water world boss. Wholly unintentional. But I wanna know where the other Prince bosses are. I wanna jump on them for a 1000 points 3 times each. Suzak so is a champion. Okay, this is not so much a headcanon. More so just speculation on what may have been. Puyo Puyo Champions has a few characters from Puyo Puyo Quest on the roster. Ignoring the hidden Paprisu and Valkyrie for a few reasons they are. Sultana. Pendley. Head. CL. Hartman. Alex. Those are 6 questies visible on the roster in total. 
Alright, now go to the options, then to player, and browse the character options for your icon. All the playable questies in champions are there in a row as well. Count for yourself and see if something's off though. Sultana. Pendley. Head. CL. Hartman. Suzaku. Alex. All seven questies are counted for. Wait. I don't know. Maybe Suzaku was meant to be in but plans changed? You still see Suzaku mingled with the other six in the Puyo Puyo Tetris 2 icons, but they seem to have copy and pasted a lot of these icons including the order. I am not sure how well supported this is. But I think it's cute, it improves Feli for me. Feli is a pretty terrible person. I have a laundry list. I'll be honest, I'm willing to admit it's possible her neutral moments outweigh her worst moments, but she has some terrible, terrible moments. Outside of Lemmas, and to some extent Boldenders, Feli doesn't seem to like anybody. Like anyone. She's only Amity's friend because Amity says Feli is her friend. But she's also not from Prim. Do you act differently when you visit a different town? Maybe. I should think that goes for Feli too. I choose to think that at home Feli is a little more friendlier and feels better in her skin. Maybe even has a friend or two. She just has a case of homesickness that causes her to act like we usually see her. A really strong, really cold ice wall she puts up when not at home. Of course, she could just not go to Prim, but her love of Lemrez is stronger than her sense of homesickness. And she chooses what she chooses much to everyone's dismay. Arl, enigmatic lecture. There's a very specific archetype of alts only specific characters seem to get. There is a correlation between them. The theme is Valkyrie. And these four characters got them. Arl. Dark Arl. All again just with Carbuncle. And... Doppelganger Arl. Yes so only Arl. Plural. Ever get these. And also, Misericord. This is not an exception to the rule of Cordizal from the future just done giving any fucks and now living in an era with people she still has some fondness over and became besties with Popoy because Carbuncle is dead and that's why Carbuncle comes to a Cord's rescue in Fever 1 because Carbuncle knows all it all makes sense now close your eyes and turn around and strike a confident pose. Blue got permanently corrupted before the events of Fever 2. This one I noticed while making Puyo Fever Nutshell. I had to rework some dialogue to reflect how he was written here. I want you to look at Klig in Puyo Fever 1. Okay, now look at him in Fever 2. So one looks like a humble kid who's maybe a little too proud of his grades. He knows he's the best, and he'd like you to know. But he's a good kid. And the other looks like he's having a crisis. No longer confident, he may still be the best in the class. But he has a need to get even better because he's gotten so insecure about his self-worth he tries to show everyone how big his worth is at every moment. Compare his fever portrait smiles. Something has happened to this boy in between games. He seems like the only person that had a personality shift between games. He was fairly polite to Amity and Fever 1 all things considered. Raffiner is Raffiner. She deserved Klug's smugness. In Fever 2 and 15th he is an asshole. And given Klug is crucial to Fever 2's plot that's entirely possible this shift was intentional. And I blame that spirit in his book. That said the DS and PSP versions of Fever 1, and the Fever website do have some renders that are more in line with how he's drawn in Fever 2 admittingly. But I'm not counting that. Because I like what I found here. The DS, PSP, and website renders obscured this weird Klug. This guy looks like a goodie to shoes. In short, I added something to Klug off screen he never fully recovered from. And while Klug stopped being as much an asshole nowadays, he still reeks of insecurity. Mod Mamono. My headcanon is that the Mod Mamono you're seeing right now isn't my true form. But that's just silly, Mod Mamono isn't a character. But just an avatar Mod Mamono speaks through. Thank mm -hmm. you.